All right, we all good? All right, welcome back inside the Media Center here at the Hill and Grand Vacations Tournament Champions. I am pleased to be joined by the 2024 champion, Lydia Ko. Before we open it up, if you are on the Zoom, please let us know in the chat function so we know to unmute you at the appropriate time. I'll just start it off here. How does it feel to be the champion in your own backyard? Yeah, um, it's pretty cool. I think in ways I was very deliberate about my alarms and you know my routine. Um, I think when you are comfortable, you sometimes just go about you know your day just like any other day. Uh, but it was, I think this is a great and comfortable way to start the season. Um, now I haven't played particularly that great at, at this event before, um, so to kind of go in with a two-shot lead uh, go, uh, going into today was a, a little bit of a comfort um, cushion uh, to rely on, but. I knew that it was going to be windy today and obviously the cold was, was going to be a big factor. So nobody was going to shoot like super low scores. So I just tried to be really steady and I'm sure I am 100% uh, certain there were nerves coming down the stretch, but I felt like I um, tried to stay a pati as patient as I can. And you know, Paul was a big help uh, in saying like, hey, just breathe and like, you know, keep the conversations going. Okay. Lydia, can you just tell us how satisfying this is after the 2023 season? Does it feel different than your other victories? Um, you know, it's. Uh, I thought I would cry, but I'm like, <laughs> nothing's coming out. So I don't, I don't even know uh, what that means. Um, but I remember it last year in Portland. I think it was only my second event working with Paul and. Paul, I, I missed the cut and I was like, hey, I'm sorry, um, you know, because obviously I, I want to play the weekend and, you know, it's it hasn't been long and you don't want to kind of set the a bad momentum just for the uh, the team. And uh, he was like, hey, you know, this is just going to make winning sweeter. And I think that's that's so true. And, um, you know, as much as the season was not the way that I would have wanted going into 2023 i felt like i still finished really strong and that gave me good momentum to this year and just like how 2022 was an unbelievable year and 2023 was a huge question mark like you can turn it around really quick and golf is a weird game like that where you could honestly miss eight cuts and win them next week i think shanti also did that last year winning in portland so it's just it's odd um I think there is no right answer for the for the game of golf, uh, but I'm just going to keep working at it. And I think in ways it's it's really good that I'm playing next week so that I'm not like sitting on like the excitement and just of the win. And I can just kind of keep working on my game and go from there. And then you told Amy um, that you can't get cocky. And I thought to myself, I don't I can't imagine Lydia being cocky. Do you, <laughs> do you feel like you've ever been that way when you've been number one in the world? I, I don't think so, but it's more so in the sense like, hey, like I I won, like you know, all's gonna be great. But it's just like we all know that you know t tomorrow is a is a new week, and um, you know I still don't feel like I played perfect. I feel like I could have hit some better shots coming in uh, coming down the stretch as well. So you know it's just little by little, and you know taking you know the win the win is obviously great. Uh, you know I wasn't sure if I was going to be back in the winner circle and to be back at the first tournament of the season um, it's pretty cool and so much faster than I could have ever anticipated uh, but it's just making sure that it doesn't literally go to your head and I'm still doing my practice swings in my room um, you know doing all the things that I've done to get to this point because you know it's I think they're all building blocks and you know sometimes the results don't show right away but if you do a good job with the fundamentals then you know, you're going to continue to grow and just get better. You, you talked about seeing good signs at the end of last year, winning at Grant Thorn Thornton, playing well in Asia. Did you maybe come into this week with more confidence than people might have thought you had? Um, I'm not sure if I, like, ever really go into a week thinking, like, I'm, like, super, feel super confident. Um, but, you know, I think it was just good that you know I got to practice here last week because it's my home club and then Monday didn't feel like you know a completely new environment and I think just a transition of you know 
from the start of the season to like the weeks prior, it was just so smooth because I'm literally like in my own backyard. Uh, but it's, you know, it's just weird. Like I, I won in Boca a couple years ago and Honestly, two weeks before that, I I was playing so bad that I was thinking maybe I should like withdraw after like play the uh, tournament of champions, but then maybe not play the week after and just get ready for Asia. Uh, but I took the positives out of you know finishing top ten that week, and then you know I was like, hey, it wasn't as bad as as I thought it was going to be, and then I I think that kind of mindset helped me to win in Boca. So it's just. It's weird. I think some weeks I feel like it's going okay, but then you go on the golf course and it, it doesn't feel right. And then some weeks I don't feel that prepared at all, and then it goes good. So I think it's a mental thing uh, at times and just kind of getting into a rhythm of things. Yeah. And then we always want to attach that a year like last year, you're going to learn a lot about yourself. Did, did you? Was there a... I cry a lot yeah. would be would be something yeah. that I I learned. Um, I'm like, man, it, there I got to get the faucet to like stop, you know, stop crying. Um, my mom says that too. She's like, you you cry a lot, <laughs> but it's just I guess like last year was hard because you know I I won in Saudi, which was my first event of the season, and then I thought I would ride the high and head a head a top ten in Thailand, but. My ball striking started not being as solid um, from there onwards. And I think missing the cut at Chevron, I almost, yeah, you know, it sucks to not be able to play the weekend. But I think I took it as like too big of a deal. Uh, and I think so many great things happened that it hit me a lot harder. And maybe it might have been better if I had just been a little bit more level headed and was like, hey, this is just not my week. And I just got to focus on you know, what are the things that I need to get better at? But I think I was so impacted just by the result. And I think that's what kind of, that's what led me to like a few months of honestly struggling and feeling like I'm walking on quicksand. Um, but, you know, having, you know, one under par round and then two, and then backing it up with another under par round the next, next day, I think those all like those small things really mattered. And, you know, I think that's, just taking small wins is such a important thing when we're out there. You, you mentioned it a couple times. You have actually got to the point where you weren't sure if you were going to win again. What gets you to that point, and how do you talk yourself, pull yourself back from that? Honestly, I don't think it takes much to get you to a point where you you are unsure if you're gonna win. You know, you're playing. I'm playing alongside the best female golfers week in week out, and you know that your B game is probably not going to cut it. You know, you, you need to put four solid rounds and and then, hey, you might be in contention and or be around the top of the leaderboard. So it's just, I think, when things don't go your way and you feel like you've put in the right work, but the results don't show, then you kind of start to wonder, like, is my time ever going to come? But, you know, that thought has come across my mind before. You know, it's... Uh, I guess winning in Hawaii, it was my first win in three years. And I am pretty sure in those three years and even in 2020, where I had a lot of top tens, I still wondered, oh, maybe like, I'm only just gonna have top tens, like, you know, that might be the highest place I get to. But when you win, I think it definitely gives you a sense of relief. And then, and just to say, hey, I can do it, but it's, it's there's no, I think way around thinking that it's it's easy to win. Um, I think, you know, golf is kind of. We were actually joking about it. Like golf seems like it's one of the random sports, uh, only sports where like random people think, oh, I could totally beat her, or like I could, like totally, like if I played on tour, I would win like three times in a season. I said nobody's probably doing that about like hitting home runs or like you know being. Uh, all-star champion or like in other things, but golf in ways, because it is so relatable, I think people think that it's easy, but it's, it's not. And, you know, I, in my 11, like 10, 11 years, I've seen the tour grown so much and the level of play is, is so high that to be able to win like like a week like today is um, it's just, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, but you know that you've got to keep 
pushing yourself to your limits and keep working hard because you know none of it comes easy. Does it actually take a win to pull you out of that I'm never going to win again mindset or, or is there a middle ground somewhere? For me I don't think there is a middle ground because if you have 10 second place finishes like that's awesome and you know to even finish second that many times or even like 10 second place like two three times that's that shows a lot of like what level of golf you're playing but to win i think there's like a different notch and to be able to you know finish strong when there's stuff on the line i think is different so for me personally yeah i, I think like winning and coming second is like it gives me a different, I guess, uh, realization to say, hey, I, I can win and be back in the winner's circle. Amidst all the tears last year, what was perhaps the lowest point for you? Um, I think I, I play, I, I shot, I played really well in the first round in Arkansas last year. And then I had put myself in good position. And then on the second day, I, um, went to like the 13th hole or something and I took me like three or four chips to get on the green and I had a struggle I struggled that day and then I think I came back to the room and I was like I have no idea why I can't back up like a good round after another one and I don't feel like the game my game is miles off but why can I put you know my the score together and sometimes you know it's gonna be, might be an ugly looking two under par and sometimes it might be like oh it could have been a five six under but you shot two under so it's like it's very different ways of doing it but I think then I was honestly like crying in my at my little room at Staybridge Suites um, thinking like hey what's the uh, what's going to be at the end of this tunnel. Um, but you know, I, I talked to my husband then, and he was like, hey, like, why, why are you putting those kind of expectations on yourself? And you know, in ways I was like, of course I got to put those expectations on myself. Like, I'm not going to go out there feeling like I don't, I'm not going to play well. But at the same time, it's true. Like, he's right. I can't, like, connect my identity to golf all the time and feel like, you know, not as good of a person if I don't uh, shoot a good score. And if I'm honestly crying after every single bad round, then that's just a lot of energy that's burnt. So, you know, I, I think I should have like taken a much more positive mindset, but because I had been struggling, I think I was affected by the little things more. Thanks. Could you just put into words what it means to be one point away from the Hall of Fame and to hear 20 wins? I mean, that's a ton of wins. <laughs> um, you know, I think whenever the announcer on the tee like says, "Hey, you know, Lydia Ko, 19-time winner on the LPGA," I'm like, "Whoa, I won 19 times. That's like, that's really cool." Um, but then, like, to have the first number change, that's really awesome. And to be only part of the small group that has won more than 20 times is uh, to be in that 20 club is uh, is really cool. Uh, but it's just. I think last year I was chasing the Hall of Fame. I felt like I could have, with the way I was playing in 2022, I could back it up with with another great year. But look where it put me. I I just kept my card if you know I hadn't won like the year before. Um, but so I'm not really gonna think about it much. But you know I think we're we're all human. Like to say that it's not gonna linger. Like next time I'm in contention, it'll be like. Oh my God! If I actually do this, I'm going to be in the Hall of Fame. That's, I'm sure that's going to be one of the gazillion voices that's uh, in my head. But I just got to strive to be the best golfer I can. And if that leads me, and if my career leads me to becoming a Hall of Famer, that's it's awesome because you know I'm just a South Korean-born Kiwi that was playing this game of golf, and who knew that I'd be here, standing here, and you know, have played in the Olympics and have, have won on, on our tour. Just speaking of the Olympics, obviously, it's an Olympic year. You have, obviously, another chance to win another medal there. Um, knowing that you're going to come into that stretch this summer with a victory in the first tournament of the year, how does that feel? Um, it's, it's awesome. I think the Olympics it was probably one of my biggest goals going into this year. Um, I played in, in the 2016 Rio Olympics as the number one ranked player, and I think there was a lot of pressure, like, 
going internally and you know I was able to come off with a silver medal and in Tokyo I was kind of like oh I already have a medal so it's like what have I got to lose um, so I think I was able to with that mindset actually play better and play a little bit more aggressively and have a really good final round and end up uh, winning a bronze medal so I think like in my perfect fairy tale story, I would win gold and have the three collection uh, of the Pretty nice collection. three different um, medals. Uh, but sometimes it is literally a fairy tale. Um, and you know, the Olympics is the best of the best of each country, the best athletes uh, there. And to be able to represent your country is just a win itself. So I'm going to enjoy it. And the National is very different to the other two golf courses we played. So it's, I think, going to be really tough. And I think the level of golf that's going to be played that week to win the medals on both the men and the women's side is, is going to be very high. Golf is obviously professional golf is week in, week out, new tournament, new city, new golf course, et cetera, et cetera. But do you ever, when you have maybe downtime, zoom out a little bit and realize, you know, how many young girls you may have inspired and how much maybe impact you've had away from the golf course? I think like the coolest part is when you come to events like this and you see so many girls that like want to get your autograph or take photos. I think that's when it really hits me because I'm like, why are they asking for my autograph? Like, I feel like I'm just uh, just like anybody else here in, in the room. And I don't think I am that special. Uh, you know, I'm just lucky to be able to do what I love doing. And the, and the game of golf has given me so much. And, you know, for me to like take photos and like, you know, give autographs is like a way I can give back because I've gotten so much. and. If I can inspire one more of these girls to have the dream to play right here at the Tournament Champions in the future, it's like my job well done. So I've gotten so much inspiration from the ladies I play alongside or and, and the players that have you know played before me. Um, and I think because of all the work they've done and because of all our all the founders have done, we're able to play in in such a awesome, uh, tournament at such great locations so it's I think part of the job but it doesn't feel like a job it's the best part of what we do. Mike Brodsky Florida National News uh, you mentioned weather being a factor were there any specific examples of how the cold or the wind this weekend or even the rain earlier in the week uh, made a difference in the tournament this week? I think the rain earlier and the rain we had over the past week prior to um, this tournament week made the greens maybe a little bit softer coming into the week but I think with the wind picking up over the weekend it definitely dried it out and the superintendents have been putting endless hours to make the golf course immaculate so you know I didn't expect anything else um, but you know with with it being cold obviously you're not hitting the ball as far and you know which makes the golf course a lot longer and I I noticed that in the Pro-Am, I was like, man, I played here so many times, but this golf course is long in like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It's, uh, you know, the golf course plays very different. And I think that is a factor that we have to take into consideration. But, you know, sometimes we play in like 100 degrees and sometimes we play in 40, but that's just part of what we do and we have to adjust to it. And I think fortunately for me, because I am a member here, I've been able to play it in like so many different conditions that it wasn't it didn't feel completely new uh you were you were talking about making it <laughs> it being relatable golf i'm part of it's you probably make it look so easy a couple of those up and downs you had can you kind of talk some particulars year round i mean ali was marveling at your up and down out of the bunker on 13 how important was the one on 15 and were there other moments in the round that stood out to you yeah, I think, you know, making birdies on 9 and 10 was a good uh, momentum shift. And, um, you know, birdieing 6, I was just so happy that I hit the green on 6 because I, I think in previous years I've gone playing like four rounds and have not hit the green at all. So I was just like, yay, I have a birdie opportunity and I'm on the green. So making coming off a birdie, coming off a hole where you haven't really played it well in the past and, and making a birdie was almost like a two shot swing for me personally uh, and you know I had a few good up and downs and I think my um, short putts were really clutch because putting can get really tough when it's windy and um, 
you know, every, even though it might be two, three feet, you know, every one of those counts. And, you know, I was able to make the majority of it. And I think that just kind of kept the momentum going. And it was on the back nine, a couple, a few of those, wasn't it? Yeah, I actually hold a really good par putt on my first hole because I crushed my putt. Um, I was trying to crush my drive, but I was crushing a different golf club uh, on that one. And then, um, so I made a real, like a 15 footer for par on the first. And then um, I made a good par on, on 16. And Alexa was, you know, birdieing uh, quite a few coming down the stretch. And um, honestly, even when she hit her shot on 18, I was like, wow, that looks really good. So, you know, even though you have a few shot cushion, you you want to make sure that you get the job done yourself and, you know, still hit quality go- golf shots and uh, not let the focus kind of get away from you. One last thing, you talk you, proximity because you live so close by the ninth green or whatever. Did you bring, do you use your cart on tournament days? Yeah, I actually, um, my mom dropped me off on a golf cart. Uh, okay. uh, every other day apart from today, our electricity actually went out this morning. <laughs> she used the blender and then it, phew, yeah. Um, so uh, apart from today, she dropped us off in a golf cart and then it's almost that distance where you're like, you're not really sure if you should walk or cart back but I put the blame on my golf clubs and say I'm not walking back with my golf clubs, so we cart back. So she's yeah. picking you up in the golf cart. Yeah, she just came back, so I'm pretty sure she <laughs> drove the cart back. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I love that. Thank you, Lydia, and congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, we're gonna go two more out. Okay.